building, um, Donovan's going to uh, rearrange this nice little shadow. Because I got a five o'clock shadow. Alright, much better. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Then we're gonna get into it. Um, we have both been on hiatus for a while. Are you hanging on the edge of your seat? People trying to uh the bullets trying to get in on the Okay. So anyway. Um, we've both been on hiatus for a while. Donovan's been overseas. Uh, I think he's trying to escape America because he's gone to Asia twice in the last, what, three months, three months or so. And, and, and I just have some other obligations. But anyway, I'm back. And so, uh, as soon as a few people, oh, I can't see live has done some, some extra, extra weird. Is that, is that my brother on there? That's right. Yeah. Well, he was. I don't know if he still is, but... So hey everybody um, who has joined us here on Facebook and hello to uh, you all on the podcast, all two of you. Uh, no, I don't know how many on it. And to YouTube, eventually you will see this as well. So uh, thank you guys for joining us. As I said, we have been on hiatus and we're back. So welcome back to everybody. Uh, the purpose of the Demetri K show is to promote black love, knowledge, and understanding in the black community, of all things in the black community, to make us a better people. And so, um, again, I'd just like to say thank you to Donovan for making all of this happen, uh, yeah, bringing me up out of the room. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So I'm making this happen. And so I want to go ahead and get right into it. And we can talk about other things other than the topic that I have. Hey, Tay. Hey, Charles. Other than the topic that I have at hand, um, because there's so many things we can talk about. So I'll leave that up to you guys. And so today's topic is the lack of self-discipline in the black community and how do we fix it? Okay. Now, um, over the last week or so, I had struggled like, ah, you know what? There's so many things we could talk about. This is, and I don't want to seem, seem um, uncaring and condescending, but um, we've been told the same things by many who have come before us for a long time now. For the believers um, in the gospel or the Bible, uh, James 2 and 14 says, faith without the works is dead. We have to mix action with beliefs and ideology. So we have all these beliefs and you know these things that we should be doing, but it's like, oh, are we, are we not doing them? For the most part, okay, I, and I'm not saying not totally. And then we have um, Galatians 6 and 7 says, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whoever sows, that will he also reap. And I'm getting to a point because you guys are probably thinking like, okay, she's giving us a sermon. I'm really not. Uh, <laughs> um, in a nutshell, if we plant something, we will get something. If we plant nothing, we will get nothing. And I'm going to get to you guys' comments as soon as I'm done, I promise you. So, um, in more modern times, the late great Marcus Garvey, the founder of the Universal Negro Improvement Association and the Black uh, Back to Africa movement, gave us a blueprint by way of the Declaration of the <coughs> Rights of the Negro Peoples of the World, which was the principles of the Universal Negro Improvement Association. Now, the Declaration of 54 points, and I'm going to read them all to you. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I won't read all 54 because it was, um, it's a lot. Okay, so the Declaration of 54 Points came about in 1920 because Garvey, along with many other black people in America, were tired of the evil and unfair treatment of white society. Now, I'll, I'll read a few of them. Number 29 of the Declaration stated the following. With the help of Almighty God, we declare ourselves the sworn protectors of the honor and virtue of our women and children. And pledge our lives for their protection and defense everywhere under all circumstances for wrongs and outrage. Number four, the declaration states, we declare that Negroes, wheresoever they form a community among themselves, should be given the right to elect their own representatives to represent them in legislators, uh, legislatures, courts of law, or such institutions as may exercise control over that particular community. So are we clear about that? Yeah. Basically saying we should elect those who are going to serve our better interests and do the things for us. Okay, I'm Maxine. Stop it. Sorry, <laughs> I'm coming to a point here, you guys. Number 39, as a lot of us know, the colors, red, black, and green, should be the colors of the Negro race. All right? And, and I won't get into what they mean because I think most of us know. Um, now, number 54 declares, we want all men to know that we shall maintain and contend for the freedom and equality of every man, 
woman and child, or of our race, with our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. All right, so moving right along. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the protege of Master Farah Muhammad and the founder of the NOI, Nation of Islam, gave us the blueprint by way of the message to the black man in America. Um, it is an, a phenomenal book. It's not a book that you should read once. You should read a couple times. I'm always going in and out of the book trying to learn new things. Okay, now... Among other things, he explained that we as black people in America should be interested in acquiring knowledge of self because without it, we will forever be a lost and a dead people. He also stated that, quote, first, my people must be taught the knowledge of self. Then only then will they be able to understand others that which surrounds them. Anyone who does not have a knowledge of self is considered a victim of either amnesia or unconsciousness and is not very competent. And it's not very competent. The lack of knowledge of self is a prevailing condition among my people here in America. Gaining the knowledge of self makes us unite into a great unity. Knowledge of self makes um, you take on the great virtue of learning. Now, in the message to the black man in America, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad also reiterated Marcus Garvey's ideology of, uh, of black people doing for self. And just like Garvey, Muhammad told us and showed us how to do it. Did he not? Did those people I just named not show us how to do it? Okay. Now, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad even told us how to eat to live. Now, some people will disagree with some of the, the, the things that he suggested, but for the most part, they were pretty sound um, advice in this book. Okay. Another blueprint. And of course... We have the Honorable Minister Louis, Minister Louis Farrakhan, the leader of the Nation of Islam, who has probably been at the forefront of black liberation longer than any black leader. Not saying that, you know, he is the greatest, that, that we can argue that whether he is or not, but I'm saying that he's probably been the longest, um, the, 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 the longest leader or the, the leader that's been in the forefront of help trying to help black people the longest. The one he hasn't been assassinated, thank God, for you know, taking the money or any of that kind of stuff. So he's been doing a very solid job for a very long time. Okay. Now, um, basically he has been teaching, um, from the blueprints of the aforementioned people, knowledge of self, do for self, self love, and so on and so forth. Now we know that there has been countless others who have been giving us the blueprint to free black people from the oppressor and self inflicted oppression. We have a lot of them. One of them being Neely Fuller Jr., a writer who understands how racism works and what we need to do to minimize its effects on us. He gave us the blueprint of the 10 basic steps. Now, I believe that came out of one of his books. It had a very long title, but this is called the 10 basic, I mean, not the steps, the 10 basic stops, where um, he has his 10 things. One is stop snitching, not, not stop snitching on Pookie and Ray Ray, who've done things, mm -hmm. but stop snitching on each other to appease white people to get a pat on the back stop doing each other in at the detriment of ourselves to help white people is what are you saying um stop name calling that self-explanatory stop cursing stop gossiping stop being discourteous stop stealing stop robbing stop fighting stop killing and stop squabbling mm -hmm. and that means to stop squabbling to the benefit of white supremacy all right, so Francis Cress Relsing, and I'm coming to a close here, is a psychiatrist, or was a psychiatrist, rather, she's gone now, who was a protege of Fuller, uh, who gave us the blueprint by way of the ISIS papers and the Cress Welsing theory. Um, she gave us the blueprint of understanding systemic and institutional racism, and um, let's see, institutional racism to help to help us get from under it. So she wanted us to understand systemic and institutional racism so we'll know how to be free of it all right and then so what else do we have here um and then last but certainly not least because like i said there's a whole host of people um we have and i like to credit her a lot to things that i've learned uh Shahrazad ali uh who penned the infamous but very necessary book slash blueprint i don't know why this thing is doing that what the heck Sorry, I don't, I don't know what this phone is doing, why it's going in and out, but it, um, I'm not on Wi-Fi, so. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let, let me go back. Last but certainly not least, we have Sharzad Ali, who penned the infamous but very necessary blueprint, The Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman. 
um, where she talked about the things that we as black people must do in order to preserve and have better functioning relationships with one another. So we have all of that knowledge, but we're missing one important element. Can anyone take a guess on what that might be? As if I didn't already say what it was. Well, that's self-discipline. We are lacking self-discipline. Now, uh, a guy, a very inspirational and motivational guy by the name of Jim Rohn, Jim Rohn who a lot of people probably heard of, um, the white guy, he was a world-renowned motivational speaker. He describes self-discipline as the constant human awareness of the need for action and the conscious act to implement the action. Okay? And I'm almost done here with my notes. Um, he also says that discipline is proactiveness and that it's a full-time job. In addition, in some aspects, it's a personal code of conduct. Because, I mean, if you don't have discipline, you don't have your own... Uh, because self-discipline for um, everybody is different. Mm -hmm. You know, you might have your own regimen to doing things, but it's what helps you stay disciplined. All right? And then so, actually, uh, something he said prompted me to do this topic because I was listening to him. I was like, what am I going to talk about? And then I was listening to this, and he summed up self-discipline or the lack thereof by simply saying, today's pleasure or tomorrow's pain. And because we as black people lack the self-discipline to achieve the goal of black unity, we suffer in pain. So today I'm asking why and what do we need to do to achieve self-discipline as black people? I hope I've been very thorough and um, uh, in giving you that information. So let's get back to the comment section. Let's see. What did I miss? Everybody saying, hey, hey, Nancy. Charles says, how do we fix and stop practicing economic in, uh, insanity? Well, that's a, a, another way. That, um, a, a, oh, thank you for that light, too. Uh, that's another way to fix it. And uh, But I want to ask you, Charles, can you define economic insanity for those in the back, for those of us who may not know? Hey, Jonah, what's happening? And uh, oops. Nancy said, or is that a big microphone? No, it was um, actually, that's actually my camera. That was uh, shadowing my face. And Jonelle says, God bless the child that's God is on. You know what's so funny? Today, I ran out of ink. I know how I ran out of ink. I let somebody use my printer. And they use it all up. And they printed some invitations with the colored background and everything. Mm -hmm. So I needed some ink. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go over down to this house. She's got a printer. But then in the back of my head, I heard my dad saying, God bless the child that's God is on. Go get off your ass and go get your own bunch of ink. And that's what I did, because I thought about that. So anyway, <laughs> we don't have our own, and so our condition and struggle remains. We are only slaves, bl um, blinding, fighting for more white allowances in a white nation's um, house instead of, oops, instead of our building our own uh, on all levels is either do for self first or fight our own or continue to be regulated by all others as dependents. Absolutely. And that's what everybody was saying. That's what that, that's the people that I read um, from their blueprints. That's all they were saying. Like, we need to unite and do for self. Otherwise, to your beautiful point, Jonah, we're always going to be dependents or being told what to do or regulated by everybody else. And still here we are trying to figure it out. And to me, I just feel like we, we lack the discipline. So we can get into all that. Yeah. Is that better, Nancy? Is that is that better? Is that better? She said, fix the light. Fix the light. <laughs> it's just not if it is fired. Is he is fired again? Okay. Hey, cuz. How are you? And Antonio, give, me, give us a thumbs up. And then Nancy says, well, the camera shadow is a part of your face. Okay. Need you. <laughs> that, uh, the lighting was jacking her up. Okay. All right. All right, so Tay says, replying to Nancy, please focus on the message, not the lighting. <laughs> Were you seeing those messages too? Is that why you fixed the lighting? Oh. <laughs> Jonelle says, uh, no material we have in uh, this white nation is secure. House, money, etc. It can all be uh, taken as it, uh, it's been given. And it's been taken at whim, like uh, Cosby, which who's going to be sentenced tomorrow. And they're trying to lock him up immediately. Mm -hmm. Like, golly. Well, they, they let him uh, most... Uh, legal cases like that when you're convicted they take you to jail immediately he was allowed to go home I just the dude was convicted on no evidence circumstantial evidence I know but yeah. now I mean we got a dude at the Supreme Court who's 
allegedly raping people. And again, when he sh- look, I- I'm gonna tell you what, what Cosby what did Cosby in when him and Camille wrote that letter, like ha ha ha, we told you, and you know talking shit. The first time. The first time. That's what got him this right. time. Wow. He didn't show no humility. He didn't stand. That's like when uh, OJ. What did his lawyer tell him? Stay gone. Stay out of the life. He's like, where the white women at? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and to uh, Jonelle's point, he says, like Cosby, OJ, etc. Read the book How. Let's see. Uh, read the book doo, doo, doo. How White Folks Got So Rich. Whites have code, and their Supreme Court judge uh, Tanny ruled there is not a law that a white man has to, to respect. respect when it comes mm-hmm. to black people. Amen. Our salvation is in separation, self love, and black unity. Allah above all. I mean, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Hey, Alex. And so, yeah, I mean, but what are we going to do? You know what I mean? We we know. Okay, let's just check this out because I know we've been gone for a couple of weeks. But let's think of something like Kaepernick and the Nike situation. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm assuming Nike's got a bunch of white guys at the helm. Somewhere they got together and said, look, I don't know if we necessarily care about black people but we know that they're spending power with black people. They took a very calculated, it wasn't just a whim, they yeah, took a calculated calculator. risk and said, we know that a large majority of white America and some black people for whatever reason hate Kaepernick. So what? We're going to put him on as the face of our campaign. Well, you know why they did that? Because they know that black people are very powerful and that we are the uh, trendsetters the pace setters. I mean, when we touch something, we make it hot. You know, Nike stock went up 31%. And they said the highest, I guess, since its inception, the, the highest gain that it's had. And they, uh, so I read an article they called Kaepernick the $6 billion man for Nike. So he, they, he's netted them $6 billion. Where does money come from? I don't know. Well, I, well I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Just not me to cut you off. No, go ahead. Um, for those that don't know, that don't leave the United States. Oh, well, are you well, bragging? No, no. I'm just saying this is why we need to travel more so we understand our economic power here compared to what's going on in the world. Oh, yeah. Nike brand is – in Japan, that's all they were wearing. It was Nike, Adidas. They wear more, more Western clothes than anything else. Right. And you saw Calvin Ka- Kaepernick's picture out there. I mean I was just like, wow. So they didn't have a problem with Kaepernick. Of course not. Right. Of course not. And so – to that point, the point that I'm making is if black people would realize just how powerful we are, we would be dangerous. I mean, come on, you guys. We make up roughly 13% of the population, and Nike decided, well, we're going to go ahead and, you know. Fuck them. We're going to just yeah, go ahead and we gonna roll, do it. roll the dice. And so, yeah, we know it was a power move for Nike all about money, but that should speak volumes to us that we have more power than we, we realize. We really do. Well, Again, um, when I was when I was overseas, and we, uh, a friend of mine, we were just sitting there talking, mm-hmm. and we're talking about like, let's say the Tiffany had the dish thing, and mm-hmm. what, what's Tiffany going Haddish, on, yeah. Haddish, and things like going that. Uh, Cat Williams said something very powerful in regards to her, how they they want to sell the ratchetness over the righteousness, right? You know? Right. So, but again, you know, we we still have a lot of power. And Jonelle says, did Knight did the math and made a business move like Nino Brown business never personal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You also say black culture is white wealth. Yes. yes. Everything we touch turns to gold. It is a known fact. You bring some slaves over here, they make you money. Well, well, that, but I'm just saying, we can walk outside. Who's calling me? Uh, reject. We can walk outside in a plastic bag from the grocery store, wrap it up, and... It's going to set, it's not going to be a trend. People are going to try to, the Kardashians are going to jump on it and try to market it, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like that, that that idiocy that we're doing now where we're putting uh, tattoos on our foreheads. No, we won't be doing that. Uh, look at what's going oh, on. Oh, I know, I know. I, yeah. Back in the day, you would never imagine. Women putting uh, shit on their chest. <laughs> it, it's just, a it, face it, tattoo. Yeah, it, it's it's crazy making themselves unemployable. Right. It's, 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 and Tay says, the reward of hiring cap outweighed the risk. Uh, Nike took a gamble and won. Folks are still talking about it. People are buying it to spite the haters. Nike won. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And they knew that. But they also know that black people, we're, we have the Midas touch. 
that because we are consumers, it's not a secret that black people are consumers and not producers, and so we spend. 97% of everything that we have per year. And so they knew that. Well, and you also got to remember, too, uh, the militancy that's that's within us. Absolutely. Any, anything to stick it to the man, even if that's right. the minutest thing. <laughs> you got, no, seriously, I've got some friends that just, they, they aren't Nike buyers, but they bought them for the simple fact that it's like, F you, this guy made a stand. Right. Based, you know what I mean? Right. So it, it's Because it, somebody it, was saying, I can't remember who it was. They're saying they were trying to order something online mm-hmm. um, for Nike, and most of the stuff was sold out. So yeah. I mean, they knew, hey Gina, uh, and then Tay says absolutely, uh, Joanne, and then uh, Nancy said Africa is about name brand. Uh, Africa is all about name brand pres- prestige. Yeah, absolutely. Hey Marcus, where you been, troublemaker? I'm just playing. And you said everything you said is correct. Period. But the biggest problem we have is that we do not promote this conversation every day. We do not have structure programs um, that unites us on a massive scale uh, let's see we do a uh, massive scale we have things that a uh, few of us know about until we see someone honored that we never heard on um, or on BET awards or the NAACP specials but you know what you're absolutely yeah, right he's true. I think and, he's right. and that's honestly why I wanted to change the conversation because I know we talk about a lot of um, ratchetness well, no, we don't even talk about ratchets, but like a lot of um, entertainment, type entertainment. News. But um, what I'm trying to say, social events and stuff yeah. that go on, which we should. I'm not saying we don't, but if we don't try, try to figure out solutions on how to fix it, then we're just going to keep talking okay. about it all day, every day. It's okay, going to be a police okay. beating. It's going to okay. be this. Okay, mm-hmm. let me uh, cut you off right there, real quick. Mm-hmm. Why do we talk about the social things? And why do you think most of your platforms out there talk about the social media things? Well, we know why. On the short answer it's not be, sexy. Well, but not only that, but on the short answer to me, if I think I know where mm-hmm. you're going, is because we don't have a lot of media outlets that, that allow us to do that. That's true, but uh, where I was really going with that is mm-hmm. it doesn't get enough likes. You know, nobody wants oh, to yeah, talk about those. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's absolutely. sad. And it's sad. I mean, you guys, I kid you not. And I know I'm preaching to the choir when I say these things. I'll see people posting stuff of black people doing the most stupidest. I don't even know if that's a word. But the most ridiculous things ever. There's this one chick. I'm not going to say her name because I don't want to give her any credit. But she has this huge following. In fact, she is the first comedic uh, female uh, comedian her, where her mixtape uh, got on the Billboard 100. Right. right. Now you'll see her mm-hmm. with um, a, a bras and panties on, and she's you know popping, and her hair is all—it's just stupid. And she has like seven, eight thousand people watching her. Remember, I sent it to you the first time yeah. I ever saw it. Yeah. And so it's like, to your point, if we were up here cooning and buffooning mm-hmm. and doing that kind of stuff, oh my god, we would be the hottest thing on Sunday afternoon. Right. right. But like you said, knowledge is not really. Sexy. It's not sexy, and nobody wants to hear the truth, or they don't want to think. They don't want people to think. Mm-hmm. And Jordan says we have not recognized the powerful example. Stephon Mar- uh, Marbury took his shoes to China and blew up. Yeah, exactly. But most of us are like, I ain't wearing that. Remember that Stephon Marbury uh, making yeah. shoes was like yeah, fifteen dollars or it was something like, $35. like that. Yeah. 20. Yeah. Oh, that, that we. I am going to be putting my kids in that shoe. But my where, daughter had a but, few pair. But where are we getting that mentality? From the mother. Well, but where's the mama getting it from? We're, we've gotten it from, you know, not ever being good enough. And so somehow we've attached materialism to, to making us right. good enough. I got a Louis bag, too, so now I can sit with yeah, you guys. Yeah, but, you, but you're living in Section 8 housing. Well, I mean, and I'm just like... <laughs> That's okay. the problem, right there. There it is, right there, right there. Hey, Al, yay, you're finally home. And Tay says, uh, y'all will disagree with me. Uh-oh. Uh, we, we never disagree with the, the wild there. Okay, so y- y'all will disagree with me on this, but one reason why I like Steve Harvey was because of the Hoodie Awards. He has um, us nominated. He has us nominated. I think he, meant he has uh, nominated our, our people, people, our businesses, our businesses and awarded them for it. Um, we don't have that anymore. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. I mean, I'm not disagreeing with her. His platform was good. Why do you have to call the Hoodie Awards? Well, I get why he called yeah. the Hoodie Awards because yeah. it was like this Funny is about, and, uh, yeah, well, it was about, about us. us. We, you know, I know, mom mm. and pop catfish I, fish I, fries. I, 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 I personally don't want any awards from a man that 
uh, totally disrespects his two ex-wives and stepping out on him and, and with a trap queen and now he's getting what he's got you heard his, his yeah, show got canceled yeah. and his uh, radio shows are being yeah. canceled across the nation so he's getting what's coming to him well you know uh, what did Jay-Z say a couple months back the album that song he released what? still I'm not trying, trying. I'm yeah. trying to be good to steal the N word. Uh, so yeah, you, still a nigga, all nigga. Yeah, regardless of you know you, you doing all that cooning for the man. I mean, he's still always gonna see mm-hmm. you as that. Right. You know, and and the people that he stepped on to yeah, get to where he's black going people. are the same people he's gonna see. Black people, you know, Steve Harvey. I'm not. I, I never try to knock a person hustle, but Steve Harvey. He used black people to get to where he was or is, I guess you mm-hmm. could say, because white people weren't um, laughing at those corny. No, jokes they weren't stuff. laughing at his jokes. Um, and now he's got a. I, I mean, he's worth over a hundred million dollars, so I don't know how much he'll be affected. But I don't think he's worth over hundred million. Well, well he got more well, million than yeah. I got. Well, all I'm saying all the lawsuits that he's facing right now. Oh yeah, he's got a lot of lawsuits. Al says, "Slow down." You know, I do talk kind of fast. Yeah, but uh, no, uh, Tay, we, we don't disagree with you at all. Like I said, I like the premise of what he tried to do, but. Mm. Who else? Somebody else is doing that. I can't remember who it is. I can't. Somebody's doing it. But anyway, so Marcus. Well, well, I'm, well I think we should start the Ratchet Awards. No. Huh? No. Okay, no. Like I said, we have a lot of candidates. No. Uh, here in Moreno Valley as uh, running for mayor <laughs> that could get the Ratchet Awards. We won't, we won't do that. Okay. Ah. <laughs> uh, where did, where did that go? <laughs> Marcus says, we have to change our conversation about issues that concern us and refuse to change it back to things that don't concern us. Everything has its place in time right now is our time. Uh, let's see. Is our time? Either move forward or stay stagnant. A lot of people don't realize, especially as entertainers, that the reason they're uh, not selling a lot of records is because you don't have a lot of happy black people right now. Other outlets are doing well, but they will continue, come. There will come a time if you don't start to address um, our issues. Uh, issues we don't, mm. we won't be so focused on your entertainment. I like football, and it's a, uh, I think you mean like like football, mm. and it's a slow demise. Amen, brother. Amen. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, football is. I mean, I don't watch football. It's lost eight percent of its uh, yeah, viewership I mean, already this year. People are starting to wake up. You had the one brother I can't remember his name, the one that retired during halftime last week. Yeah, people he jumped re- on his ass. Yeah, but he made he made some good points in saying I want to go while I still have my faculties about me. Mm-hmm. He says, and I love this part. And I'm so glad that he implemented race in it. Where he says, I I was tired of using my black bodies for white for the white establishment who don't appreciate me. Right. So I, I thought that was awesome. Right, you're making up rules because you don't like what we're doing right. as individuals. But we make up all of your, damn near mm-hmm. all of your business. Your revenue, right. right. All of it. And then Tate says, you're right, Steve found fame with white for, uh, people and forgot about us. That's t- mm-hmm. kind of what they do, you know. And Jonelle says, right, we have the solution, but we are conditioned and mentally dead. We need to um, take from self-hate um, and either ignorance to self-love and intelligence. Our ignorance is invested in our self-destruction uh, let's see. Um, invest in by our enemies. We need to be separated from the system of Satan and all its uh, vices and works. Our fight is for a full and complete liberation. Absolutely. And I love how you said for a full and complete liberation. A lot of us. Know, brother, where we going to go? <laughs> well, uh, this good white man? <laughs> uh, uh, now, now we got some light. Uh, Are you happy, Nancy? No, I'm just like. <laughs> uh, because a lot of uh, us, not us, but I'm just saying in general, are happy with being able to drink from the, the, yeah. the water fountain. We consider that liberation. Right. Um, we, we're not separating to where we can go into the store and, you know, not, or, or you know, have to be, well, we are still followed. But you, you guys get the point mm-hmm. that I'm making. We think that is liberation. It's not liberation. It's being self-sufficient away from everything that we are now dependent upon. Um I saw a girl post a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week ago at this point. She's boasting, and she'll probably see this and block and delete me, but that's fine. <laughs> she posted, and I, I'm going to use her words exactly, not my words. She says, a bitch, Section 8 finally came through. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't y'all 80s babies get up off it and let a real <laughs> That's way right. Move out the way. Let, let me get in that crib. And I thought, and you somebody mama, and you gonna teach? No, me no, 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 not somebody, somebody's. See, I was taking. 
but you're going to teach them that. Mm-hmm. That's not liberation. That's mm-hmm. dependency. You know, that's you feel slavery. like now you can go get your own. That's you slavery. You're independent. You can't have no man come over there. You got to hide him like Claudine did off in the closet. And then when, when, when they find you doing that and they throw you out of the section that you want to talk about and get me killed. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, but you know what I mean? That, that right. premise. is. Right. Oh, hey, look what they did to me. And it was unfair. But you didn't tell me that you snuck a man against the rules into the place. And now Ray Ray, Ray who's been on the block for 40 years, is dead. <laughs> you know, standing up for you. I can't stand you. Okay, I'm sorry. And Tay says, no, Donovan, leave her alone. <laughs> um, I don't know who you, if you talk about something. Donovan be talking about everybody. Uh, hey, hey, Kevin. He says, "Yeah, imagine this energy being spoken because we created our own nation of African a- Africans in America. Judgment will be based on a reality that is set us on a course of determination." Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, we have to do something. But to my original point, the doing something is going to take self discipline. Mm-hmm. It's not. People think getting somewhere. It happens. Yeah, or somewhere that's worthy of like black liberation is worthy, right? We think that's supposed to be easy and overnight. Like individually, we don't want to do the small things or the things that's necessary to help us collectively. No, because we want somebody else to do it for us. Well, because that's how we've been conditioned. Somebody mm-hmm. else to do it for us. Somebody mm-hmm. else give me some Section A. Somebody right. else to take you know, feed me. Somebody else is gonna fight for me. Right. Mm-hmm. Somebody else is gonna do it. And then uh, Tay says, let Rick James be... Oh, he's talking about... <laughs> uh, let Rick James be. She didn't do anything to you. Laugh out loud. And Alan says, Tom Joyner does the cruise and a family reunion with proceeds won HBCUs. Yes. Yeah, uh, but I, the HBCUs are dying out. And yet... Uh, anyway, that's another well, story. Well, no, they are dying out. Mm-hmm. But we, we don't put... Um, we don't put enough uh, resources, financial resources, into our own yeah. uh, educational system. And it's sad. I mean, no and, shade to Dr. Dre, but what? Mm-hmm. He gave, what, $3 million or so to USC? Like, yeah. I think USC got a lot of money already. Yeah, white, you know? being a white school. And, um, you know, the sad thing about HBCUs, I had a relative that went there. To have, my son went to an HBCU. They teach him a false narrative about the world. Because you're in a black environment, black this, black. I mean, I'm wrong. And, 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 and that's good to teach. But also teach him reality. Check this out. Somebody named, uh, um, and hey, uh, Jamal, I think mm. that's how you say it, Rosa, says there is, the, oh, there, no, there is a problem in, in our, our community. community. Oh, I thought, I, I read that wrong. That's why my eyes got big. I thought you said there's not a, but I can read, honestly, I can't. There's mm-hmm. not a problem in our uh, Yeah, remember community. your dyslexia, you got to read back Am before okay. forward, right. forward to back. So, no, um, absolutely, there is a problem, uh, but we need to fix it. Mm-hmm. And that is, I really believe by, um, Exercising self discipline. I mean, self. I got to discipline myself to wake up in the morning. Right. We got to discipline ourselves to go check the mail every day. I mean, mm-hmm. something is small, but cut we your grass do it. every cut week. Cut your grass. Yeah. You know, schedules. Iron the clothes. And you right. got this, all those things. Take Water discipline. the plants. Whatever. Right. Yeah. And Al says, said the non entertainers <laughs> <laughs> should give up TV shows because he's not funny and does coon. Um, is mm-hmm. he cooning now? I haven't seen anything by yeah. the entertainer in a yeah, while. Yeah, he has a new show that's out now on Fox. I forgot the name of it, but he goes from show to show. Well, he needs to pay the bills. Yeah. Uh, and um, Jamal, J- uh, Jamal. I, I be- I'm, forgive me if I'm Jamal. saying it wrong, mm-hmm. Jamal, he mm-hmm. says, why don't we speak on our issues? Well, that's we what do. we try to do here. We do mm-hmm. try to speak on our issues, but it's like, gosh, we got so many issues, but I think... Because as I said in the be- in the beginning of all the people I um I, I mentioned that laid the blueprint out for us Marcus Garvey and for those of you who guys who subscribe to Christianity the Bible um the Honorable Elijah Muhammad Farrakhan <laughs> just many before us they've laid out the blueprint the thing that's missing is action and to Donovan's point and to a lot of you guys' point we want somebody else to do the heavy lifting, do the lifting. we just mm-hmm. want to show up to the party right We're with and the plate take and the spoon to, and, right take home the gold <laughs> plates you know. <laughs> And Tay says, folks are proud to be on Section A. Why? They, they what are. happened to being proud of earning your all? You know what? I swear for God and 12 disciples, if I'm lying, I'm flying. I I, I promise you, I read that and I was just mm-hmm. so taken aback. Like, is that what you we put? We're not ashamed of that? We I mean, I'm be. not saying, what, what did I tell you to, um, I, that, that phrase I gave you the other day? <laughs> uh, those things are to help you. Get on your feet, right. not stay on your ass. <laughs> right. Okay? Exactly. What happened to that ideology? But that's why <laughs> now, yeah, you know, and 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 don't uh, misconstrue what yes, I'm saying. Yes, Jamal, the Democrats mm. have ruined us. Yes. I concede that yes. point. Yes, and 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 don't get me wrong. Don't don't misconstrue what I'm saying here. 
this is one of the points I have. I happen to agree with with Trump. He's gonna make the hood great again by cutting that shit off. Uh, yeah, and um, if you guys read too, the Trump administration is trying to uh, what is it? Cut off uh, the the uh, benefits for people who've gotten green cards. Yes, and so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, black people have been catching hell since we've been over yeah. here, but now everybody else is starting it, Sorry, as you no, say. <laughs> what, what do you say? Gonna... Wait, 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 come in, come and enjoy all of the benefits of being in America, yeah. all of the racism, all of the... Right, don't just come get yeah, good stuff, good get, stuff. All, get all of it, get all the experience of being an American. Right, and as Tay says, um, uh, he, she's replying to Jamal, mm-hmm. um, no, we allow Democrats to ruin us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know... Both parties are ruining yeah, us. And, and, yeah, and to Donovan's point, it's both parties, but you know, you got to think of where we came from. Mm-hmm. And I want to say we were a hopeless people, but at some point in time we were. So it, we know why we became Democrats. The Democrats through FDR... Because FDR wasn't messing with black people either. It was his wife who was like, look, we need to embrace them because they're hungry and they're starving too. I guess you could say she was good. Um, but they needed black people's votes. I mean, we could vote. We were still being suppressed, but we could still vote. So they started to include us with the socialism because black people were like starving to death. So then they decided to give us the, you know, the free mm-hmm. everything. And that's how we became Democrats. And we've been, um, as Jamal says, been suffering... Um, under the ideology of uh, Democrats ever since, if right. you will. In, in the words of the so-called uh, greatest Democratic president we've had and the best, the black man's best friend, Lyndon Johnson, I'm going to keep those niggers voting Democratic for the next 500 years. And have, you, have, have you ever quote. tried to argue with a fellow black person about not being a Democrat? All the time. You'd be better off offering yeah. arguing with that wall. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And Nancy says, go see 11-9. The majority is about Flint. Uh, that's what yeah, I heard. Yeah, it huh? is. Yeah. A lot of people think it's about uh, bashing Trump. It yeah. Isn't. And that's what I heard. And, and really, it's three movies in one. That's, really yeah, I heard that too. So. I, I be listening to NPR and they be talking yeah. about that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, so. And Jamal says, black women need to respect the good black men we have. Oh, Oh, wait, I, I, I got to get a clap on that one. Go ahead, brother. Keep going. Yeah. You sound like me. You must be listening to my show. I agree. <laughs> I, 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 I agree with you. I, I don't even have an, um, a follow-up or an argument to what you said. I, I definitely agree with you on that. And Allison, I think, when black, I think when black men that aren't Steve Harvey host game shows, it fails. Um, I don't watch TV Yeah, I don't watch TV. Yeah. I don't watch game shows. Uh, but I take your word for it. Janelle says, do we know the difference between liberation and dependency? We are too happy in allowance. Our people like Martin Luther King fought for, I said King, mm-hmm. fought for allowance and allowances is not true substance. We have fell uh, in love with temporary and reject the thought of that which will bring permanent. Well, absolutely. So you, you're right. And that's a, I, honestly a very good question. Do we know the difference between, because to the uh, example I gave you guys earlier about the, um, girl who was boasting about being on uh, Section 8, getting the housing, in her mind, she might be thinking, I'm That's liberated it. now. I made it. Mm-hmm. I have my own spot. I don't know what she does well, now, but I have my own spot. <clears throat> um, and it's mine, but it's like, is that really yours? Well, well you got to think about it. The system has been set up to where, I don't know why uh, black women and their daughters get into it, you know, whatever, whatever. But for some reason, the, the young black girl wants to hurry up and flee. What's the easiest way to do it? You look around, you're 17 years old, you get pregnant. Oh, all I can do is get pregnant, I can get my own house. I can move out of my mama's house. Like, I'm not saying this is what they're doing intentionally, but I'm just saying mm-hmm. that's the safety net that they can fall fall under. I can get this, I can get that. I, a grandma did it, aunt did it, so-and-so did it. That's because, the, the, and to that point, their circle of influence, mm-hmm. which is their mom and their grandmas mm-hmm. who are doing those things, um, needs improvement. To say. Yeah. And I'm trying to be nice. Yeah. It needs improvement, but you're right. Um, they're being taught that's the way to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, stay on the system for Yeah, you don't have to get a years. job. You know, we can get this, get it. And then now, if push comes to shove, the system's saying, give us a name. Now you got girls that are ruining uh, guys' lives. Not saying the guy didn't hit it. He, he did hit yeah, it. Because you know, we can be right. here all day talking about that. Right. But, you know, what I'm saying is they're, they're giving in these outlets where we're self destroying ourselves. Well, yeah, we, like to Jonelle's point, though, what's the, do we know the difference between liberation and dependency? I think we get that confused. Not mm-hmm. us, but in general. Mm-hmm. And Jamalia says, not having ink on your face doesn't mean you aren't attractive. I agree. It, it, I mean, it's it, right. it, it, beauty is an eye to behold. Very, very, very true. Uh, did you see that meme I, I sent to you from uh, Japan where that girl, she was very pretty, and she was all tattooed up a hair. Oh, yeah. And it said, if your son brought this home, what would... 
If you like it, I love it. Good luck. Yeah. That's all I can say. I mean, honestly, in that picture, I would have high high fived my my son and said, you know, do what you got to do, but uh, you know, push it on through. And Kevin, you say Dr. Joyce DeGruy has said it best: um, Africans in America need to be focusing on healing our spirits from post traumatic slave disorder through consciously making the goal to heal our brokenness by accepting uh, accepting that the cure is inevitable only if you believe one person is enough. Now, absolutely, mm, and I, and I sh- actually, I should have included her, but her work is awesome. She um, lectures all over the place um, to, to everybody about black people because, see, it's easy to say, Oh, black people, you know, you have these issues, you're this, you're that, and the mm-hmm. other. But she goes deeper and said, well, why? Let's figure out why, why we are the way we are. We didn't wake up or just happen to come into America this way. Mm-hmm. This was something that was done to us. And even after all those years of physical slavery being over, we are still suffering from those. It's like a, a, a vet coming from war. Mm-hmm. PTSD. Black people are the same thing. We are still suffering um, under those same things. So okay, but, but, but uh, <clears throat> here's my question: If you want to be successful, should you not hang around people that are successful? Yes, absolutely. Um, so when you hang around people in the hood that don't want shit, I, obviously that spreads a yeah. Bad I, mean, I don't think you should hang around anybody who doesn't want anything. But as mm-hmm. I'm saying, at some point in time, we got to stop fleeing the hood. And start improving the hood. Well, um, uh, I, I, matter of fact, I was reading something last night about that where they're saying sometimes you're in a situation that not, might not be, uh, uh, you know, r- r- really good for you. Mm-hmm. But in, until you get to where you want to go, sometimes, you, you know, unpack your bags and get comfortable. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. You, you know, it, it's almost like that. You're waiting for your dad to come pick you up, your parents to come pick you up. You got your bags ready to right. pack and you know, you're still waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. But until they get there, you don't because you don't know when it's going to happen. You don't take care of your, your hood. Take right. care of your neighborhood. We, oh, I mean, if we don't, who's going to do it? Right. Everybody's like, oh, I'm leaving. I'm yeah. going. You know. In the meantime, we throw the trash on the ground, and you know what? No, no. You know what I'm saying? You know, in the meantime, right. Get comfortable and say, I'm going to be here for a minute. Right. And so Jamal says, we need to start with family. We need more respect for our men. Our boys need to see maturity. You know what? Mm. I, and to, for those of you guys on the podcast, we are coming right, right back. back. Uh, I'm glad you said that because I was actually having a conversation with somebody last night about that and that our boys especially they've been coddled to death <laughs> you, know, you, we, you know we gotta wake them up to go to work we gotta, you gotta you know, beg did you them. do this and did you do that it's like well, when are we ever gonna expect for them to be men if we don't just say you know what go because mm-hmm. birds throw I'm not saying we gotta throw our kids out the nest but birds throw, you know, they say go fly, well, go figure life out. But we're like, oh, mm-hmm. honey, well, did you, did you, did you, are you going to be late for work? Yeah, well, the did funny, you eat? Yeah, the funny thing my ex wife used to say, why is it that when you tell Ramon something, I mean, he gets it done. And then when I tell him, it's like three, four, five, six times. Because as a man, he, he, I mean, you know how to talk to him mm-hmm. and what to say to mm-hmm. him. And let's see here. Um, Al says, my grandma used to say, if you want to get on your feet, get off your ass. <laughs> I love it. And uh, Jamal, he says, oops. Uh, oops, go back, go back, go back. Oh, wait. I think I messed up the comments. Let's see. And he said, immigration has ruined us. Um, explain that. Because I, I don't want to um, guess on what you're saying. And you also said, Compton is now Mexico, and we are still fighting for them, um, undermining us. We need to vote. Um, hey, uh, Anisha says respect, respect unto you as well. And Nancy said Compton was Mexico. Uh oh. Mm-hmm, and Kay says if black folks walked away from the uh, Democratic Party, they wouldn't know what to do. Lord have mercy. Mm. And Al says, will you tell your audience about the uh, what the Texans did for those black people? Yep, I'll tell them in just a little bit. Don't let me forget. And Jamal, Jamal says black women need our women to stop being men. Uh, Lord, oh. Black women need our, black women need our. Okay, I get it.